when you walk out on, on an audience and you see people that you know and you kind of go, oh, yeah, I know you. But you're kind of going, well, I know you like Texas and I know you like Texas and I know you like Texas. And we were talking about, we, the two of us have the exact same thing. We're looking for the that's in the audience that doesn't like Texas. Charlene, thank you very much for coming here to the top of the tower. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you for the music. See, I just keep wanting to burst into song. I thank know. you for the music, the songs I'm singing. Thanks for all the joy I'm bringing. You can live without it. I ask in all honesty, what, what would I be, be without a song or a dance? What are we? we? So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. Right. Okay, let's see how many song titles I, I can get into the questions. Because we're getting, like, we're getting free Charlene here. Like, honest to God, I don't know what's happened today. I think it's because I think I'm delirious from this morning. Well, you've been hanging around for a long time. Right, shush. Everybody shush. Shh. Shh. I mean you as well, Grace. <laughs> so you've been hanging around all day, right? I have been. And you've been hanging around in the charts for a long time as well. Been just That's my wee... radio thing, by the way. The, I... You've been hanging around all day, but also you've been hanging around on the shelves. Oh, my God, that's a really freaky voice. It's my radio voice. That's With... not your frigging radio voice. I've heard you on the radio. You... Um, and I always think the word... I love everything about being in a band and being in music, but hanging around is not something I like. See, I hate that bit as well. Okay. Johnny in the band loves it. He's That's his favourite bit. Right. He's like, the hanging about is my favourite bit. Because when we were going on stage, he went, how long are you going on stage? And, and Johnny says, as long as you want. And I went, no. I've got a house to go to get on with. Do you know what I mean? Um, so the hanging about is your least favourite bit, but people in your band like it. I, I'm in a similar situation with my band. Don't you find that they really annoy you when Every you're day. you're like supposedly the main one, <laughs> but then behind closed doors you're not. Without me, you're nothing. Uh, you know, but it's so tempting to say that. But oh, like, I say it all the time. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I can get away with it because I'm a woman. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? There's some disadvantages we have as women, but then there's some really big advantages <laughs> of <laughs> saying sh like that. Say f you lot. Without you, I'm but seriously. I don't walk on that stage. You lot are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> So be nice. Uh, we're really going to have to employ the beep button on this. I uh, need a eat. Yeah, you really do. Um, so um, can I... I'm going to massage your ego now. So when I, when I think about what I want to be as an artist, I have three inspirations, right? Okay. My first one is... Um, and this is really important. I read a book by Steve Martin, his autobiography. Yeah. And then that really informed the way I was on stage. Okay. Two, uh, Charlene Spiteri, because you're incredible and you are ballsy and you, uh, it's even with all that kind of gubbins that goes around you and the way you are, your voice is still the main thing, right? And that's Thank really you. important and people forget, people forget you have to be a fantastic singer. Now my third inspiration, I'm not going to tell you because you always have to keep one card back. Yes. But Tell me about your inspirations. Who's been your guiding light? Elvis was like my very first, like when I first saw Elvis, like yeah. I was really small. I was like, oh my God, that is just like, it was just a wildness and like, he just, he was just like in the moment, just going crazy. And then as I got older, like when I was a teenager, The Clash and Joe Strummer, and that was why I always played a black and white telecaster and yeah. like for years. I remember seeing Joe Strummer, um, and he cut his his the side of his hand on the scratch plate uh, on the pickup um, bridge, and literally it was bleeding all over the scratch plate. And he had gaffer tape round it, and it was uh, like, and he was round his wrist, and he was spitting out the words. And I was like, "Oh my God, I want that's that's who I want to be." The thing is, well, Elvis and the Clash have got a lot in common, not yeah. just the front cover of London's Calling, yes. but. They also, I think, as two acts, took the music very seriously, but kind of you knew they weren't taking the, f the fame and themselves that seriously. Yeah. They were having, or like you'd always see like a, 
a turned up corner of their mouths when they were doing everything. And I think you've got the same thing, right? Um, well, I think you've got that as well because when I see you, like you joke, and you're having a laugh. Don't and don't turn it back to me. No, but they, they, no, but this is really really important because the thing is, is that you know you've had years of success, we've had years of success, and the most important. I'm going to turn this pack off. I can hear it in my ears. Um, the really important thing is, is that I remember when I was the week before my 18th birthday, and I wrote our first song with Johnny, which was "I Don't Want a Lover." And I remember thinking, if I can write one song in my life that people know, yeah. that for me, that was the most important thing. It was always about the song. It was always about the music. It was about, like, if I can be dead and there's still those songs there that literally somebody discovers, it doesn't matter about me. It matters about the song. Somebody goes, that's a great song. Yeah. They don't know what I look like. They don't know who I am. What I, they don't care about anything. They're just going... That is a great song. Who are this band, Texas? That for me was always the most important thing, but it still is the most important thing. All yeah. the other stuff, I don't really give a sh. If I never had to shoot another video in my life, I'd never be happier. If I didn't have to, like, you know, be talking, like, doing, you know, you me, 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 me. It's so fing annoying. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But you Why don't I talk about my self or like, I was like oh, you God. say that Charlene but what you're amazing at is something that right so I can do a radio show I can be entertaining in a moderate way uh, but if I'm doing a show the, I don't care I don't care about being scared about playing songs that's mm. fine I don't care about falling over or getting the words because that's people's favorite bit yeah what I <laughs> care what I don't like is being uh, myself in between the songs that I find really hard but you're the master of it and that mm. I was watching there and I watched you at Carfest watched you at Glastonbury and what you're brilliant at is just projecting pure you-ness but it wasn't always like that right you know is I that mean, something that's come later yeah it ca I know exactly when it came um, there was oh, what tour was it it would have been Probably about 97, the end of 97, 98. So right. it was like on the White on Blonde album, or maybe it was just after that album. It was maybe the Hush record. And we had um, our drummer left. We'd been rehearsing. And we were, it was the first day of the tour, and he left the night before the first day of the tour. He walked out, and I was, I was so angry and so annoyed. I mean, I was raging. I was absolutely raging. I thought, how bloody dare you i was so pissed well off well him. edited then by the way yes i did think i better stop swearing but you know when scottish people swear it's like terms it's like an endearment yeah, isn't yeah, it it's like it's like a, it's but like go a on, abbreviation go on. So, he, so he left so anyway so he You're left really and i was angry. so angry and i was really upset we got another drummer in and we had this amazing drummer who came and literally learned our set in a matter of five hours so like when we played that first gig and we were on it was on an arena tour and literally, we were sailing by the seat of our pants. I mean, literally, it was terrifying because he's looking at us, we're looking at him. We're, the communication of the band was so important. The concentration that it took was like, ooh, you're going, no, 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 no. And I was so annoyed that it was, I walked out and I was just like to the audience because I knew I needed, I knew we needed these gaps, but I didn't care. I was just so angry and I was just like, Phew. Well, you think that's like Clapton? Seriously? <laughs> like, get with the program. Literally, because I and felt... Was it like a proper light bulb moment? And you went, this is actually... I can do this every night. <sighs> yeah, it was... It, what it was, was like one of those moments of like, oh, my God, people slightly like that I'm being a bit abusive <laughs> to them. I don't know why. But, you know, it was just kind of that, like, that honesty and that not it wasn't fake it wasn't it was like your emotions and your feelings so you know sometimes i'll go on stage and i'm like eh, like you know i decide to be funny that night and sometimes i'll be like okay today this happened and i'm not happy or something bad happens and you talk about it and you're just yourself and it's i mean it's the old hairdresser comes out in me right well there you go uh, that is the truth of it uh, yeah, where are you going on holiday exactly <laughs> God, this no, but I, I I know what you mean because like I mentioned, like Steve Martin was inspiration, and I can remember that it was in Chicago, and I'd read his autobiography that day. Mm. It's called Born Standing Up, and that night I went on stage, and I wasn't scared of the gap anymore. Not even the gap between songs, but also a bit of silence. And suddenly I went, "All right, 
I'm actually at the front and everyone's looking at me. And whatever I do next, they're going to notice. Yeah. And it was quite exciting. And I can remember the moment I said, everyone put their hands together. And they started clapping. I went, no. I said, put your hands yeah. together, not clap. <laughs> and then I thought, that, Power was, hungry. that was weird. And I went, yeah. and they did it. And it was brilliant. It's it was amazing. I mean, the gap, the, the space is really important. It's like, it's like in films that the, the silence sometimes is the most important part because it creates this, it just creates this sort of feeling of, oh my God, what's about to happen? And it's like I always say is like when you're playing live as well, it's about leading the audience into, because mm. it's, not, it's not about us and you. It's about us all together. You know, and that, that is the most important thing. So it's about sharing something together. But sometimes we've got to give you a little bit of guidance of literally let's, this is, a chorus is about to come. So feel that there's something important coming. Yeah. Before I ask questions, still, what's the worst question that you hate being asked? I have mine. I just, I, I, do you know what? It just depends how they ask it. It depends All on right, the, good. the journalist. Because sometimes I'm just like, if it's lazy journalism, I'm about like, Q. You know, I just I just decide that I'm going to be really fickle sometimes. I know exactly what you mean, and Do I. You know wasn't, what I mean? I, thing is, what the worst thing about that was, you answered that question, and I wasn't listening because I was looking for these questions in the audience. Yeah, and but that, I knew that. And that I was is giving what I you hate. that. I was giving you that moment. Thank you. I was giving you that space. And I really, excuse my French, <laughs> you off. <laughs> I have some questions from the audience. Huh. Hazel Wills, where are you? Oh, hang on, Hazel Wills. You'll need a microphone. Where, where, where? Hello. You're Hazel Wills. Do you promise? Okay. If she's lying, she's dying. I promise I'm Hazel Willis. What's your question, Hazel? Charlene, um, amazing. I mean, you you look 20 years younger than you are for a start. (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm coming up close. She's like, no, you friggin' don't. I'm, I literally, when you get close, it's not that pretty. Do you know what I mean? I just covered it up well. Whatever you're putting on there, I need to know what it is, okay? Do you know, seriously, I'm, I, I love scrubbing my face. I lo- Do you know that thing? Like, it's literally water. I'm not, I lo- I've, got a, I've got one of those, what is it like, what is it called? The thing that goes zzz, all your faves and scrubs it. Oh, I've got one of them. Do you get one it's of them? Like I love little, that. It's like a little rotating brush. Yeah, that yeah. goes like that. Yeah, like that's like the rotating brush. I love it. It's uh, like, right. I've used one of them for years and I swear by it. They're good. And then I use that, do you know that nip and tuck thing that you get in Boots the mm-hmm. Chemist? Really? So it's nip and tuck's glycolic scrub. I'm going to look great. I love a scrub. It's really great. Is that the question? That wasn't even the question. That Sorry, was the it just intro takes off all question. the off your face. Okay, um, you've had a huge following for all of your career. You know, it's... Well, not all of it. (laughs) Um, You remain contemporary and you keep those amazing Scottish accents right front and centre. I mean, that's important. Having worked in Scotland and actually fallen in love with a place a number of times, um, I know how vibrant the Scottish music scene is. How has that kept what you're doing how, how was it helpful did it inspire you in any way was there more support around there um it's funny i never i never really break up i never break up or like scottish music english music irish music i mean obviously there's, there's lots of different things i just kind of thought that pop stars were aliens and that they were people from another planet that i never ever imagined that i would do this I really didn't. Sometimes I kind of go, wow, that's kind of cool. Um, but, you know, I didn't imagine I'd still be here after this length of time because y- you just don't. But I love what I do. Scotland has been unbelievably important in the sense that we were always the outsiders, you know. And when when we first came to London, it was like, you know, you just, y- you were people are a bit like, yeah, but they're Scottish. You're like, um, and it, it's funny, and it's like even when we worked with the, when we worked years ago with the Wu Tang Clan, I think that was like such a connection for us because they were from out on the island and they weren't from like right in New York, and they had that kind of really like they had that really big sort of I guess it's like a chip that you have, and you're just like 
you know, it just makes you fight a little bit harder, dig your heels in a little bit harder, and you've got that fire in your belly that's literally like, no, I'll, I'll not go under. I will literally like see this through. So that's what, that's what Scotland's given me more than anything. Thank you, Hazel. David Barlow, oh. uh, where are you? There Gary's he bro- is. Gary's brother. Oh. David Barlow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, what's your question? Do you want me to read it out? Or do you want to read it out? I'll read that. Oh, you've got a you've got a mic. <laughs> He's got a microphone. Oh, he brought his own hell. mic. Um, he is Gary Barlow's brother. <laughs> he brought his own mic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hello. Um, hello. Great gig. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. If you weren't in Texas, what band would you want to be in? <laughs> <laughs> the money's good. <laughs> No. Listen, I, I, ha, I do. Uh, you know what? Seriously, I do love the Kaiji, but no, I don't want to be in another band. F- every other band. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the best band in the planet. Why would I want to be in? A, why would I ever want to be in another band? I, I love tr- my I, band. That's a really good answer, and I got into trouble for that once because someone asked me uh, from, from a newspaper. I won't say which one, and they said, um, they said, "What do you <laughs> like?" like <laughs> And I said, I think I'm in the best band in the world because if I didn't think that, there'd be no point in being in exactly. a band. Exactly. Right. And then, in the next day in the paper, said, um, Ricky Wilson thinks Kaiser Chiefs are better than Oasis. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, I thought we were in the best band in the world because there's no point otherwise. But then they always try and make yeah, that, some that, story about that's it. That's the thing. Everybody always tries to put, like, you know, never read, what, never believe what the paper says. It's a load of I believe everything the papers see. My mom uh, said uh, to uh, me unless. one time, and I was like, that, what are you talking about? I've just told you that's completely untrue. And you're going, yeah, but it said it in the papers. And I'm like, you're my mother. <laughs> and I have just told you that that's a lie. I remember one time Selena Scott years ago interviewed me. That's a flashback. That's, that's how old I am. Selena yeah. Scott interviewed me. Um, and Selena Scott interviewed me, and she was looking at her notes, and she was interviewing me. And I didn't have children at the time. And we were on, the, I think the London Eye had just opened and we're on the London Eye ground and she says, so your son? And I went, I, I don't have a son. And she went, yes, you have a son. And I went, I don't even have a child. And she was like, and she went, she was so adamant about it. And I said, and I thought it would be really funny to kind of go with it. And I went, yeah, the record company basically drugged me and literally I was like out for nine months and had a child in that time and literally I have a child locked away. That, and she hey, she really took the half for me. Oh. She really took the half. You know, we're talking to different same people. If someone had said to me the same question, I would have just gone along with it because I didn't want to embarrass them. Why? I would have gone, oh, yes, yes, my son. Mm, mm. She did the turn to somebody. Like, she literally did the... Really? She did the, She did like... The research. The research. Wow. was like, I just saw somebody yeah. going, oh, no. Like, oh, God. And you're on the London Eye, so you're stuck. I'm like, we're in this little yeah, capsule yeah, we're together. 45 minutes, for baby. 40, yeah. Selena Scott. Someone is going to get, like, splattered across so these windows. So the answer is the only band you've ever wanted to be in is Texas, and that's probably the way yeah. it's going to be. I mean... I, I have I have wanted to be Marvin Gaye many times. Literally, I'm like, yeah, I, like I'm like I am. It's not possible you know, though. I know, but I just want to be Marvin Gaye, don't I? I'm a bit like, and then sometimes I go like a little bit over, and then I'm like, no, I'm Tammy Terrell this week. So I kind of sometimes I'm at home. Keep and your I'm, options open. Yeah, but sometimes you know you do a bit of karaoke, and I'm like, I'll do both parts. <laughs> <laughs> um. We're running out of time, but John Miles, where are you, John? John, hi, John. Have you got a mic? Oh, you've got one now. Oh, he's got Great. one now. have got a mic. Well, first of all, thank you both very much for the performance and obviously the banter we're having now. But my question is, after nearly 40 years in Texas, every morning, what gets you up to keep Texas going forward? Um, I mean, seriously, like, you know, you do things like this, you stand up, there's people singing your songs and cheering. I mean, it's not exactly hard. It's like don't tell them, Charlie. Yeah. It's really hard. Do you know we? Do you know this is a really this is seriously. Ricky and I were talking like just back there for five minutes, and we were literally having a discussion of like when you walk out on, on an audience and you see people that you know, and you kind of go, oh, yeah, I know you, but you kind of going, well, I know you like Texas, and I know you like Texas, and I know you like Texas, and we were talking about we the two of us have the exact same thing. We're looking for the. F- that's in the audience that doesn't like Texas. 
I am literally, I'm literally looking for the husband that's been dragged by his wife <laughs> to the show, and he's kind of on the fence. He doesn't know if he likes you or if he doesn't like you, but he's been dragged to the show, and I am literally like, mate, I am going to blow your minds. <laughs> you know. So that's what keeps you going. That, that is what keeps going. It's like, who can, who can I win? Who can I win over? Who can we oh, get? Absolutely brilliant answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. All right, one last question. Hayden Jones. Where's Hayden Jones? There Jones, you are. Jones and Jones. Uh, I'll give you my microphone. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Hayden, just in case you forgot what you were asking me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't wave to you in the corridor either. That's all right. Um, how did you get Alan Rickman to do the video for Indie Man? Oh, listen, Alan Rickman, I miss him so much because we became great friends. And basically, we were having a video meeting. There was a guy called Vaughn Arnell who was doing quite a few of our videos at that point. And I, we'd done the Elvis video with Vaughn when he turned him into Elvis Presley. And I used to love it because I don't particularly like making videos, but when they say, you're going to be, do you want to be Elvis? I'm like, yeah, yeah, And then he was like, Vaughn says to me, do you, how about you dance in this video? And I was like, oh, f off, I ain't dance, seriously? He was like, no, no, but like, you do the tango. And I was like, ooh, ooh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to learn the tango. And he went, yeah. I said, yeah, but I've got to dance the tango with somebody that you would believe would dance the tango. So we're sitting there, like, talking, like, and I'm like, don't give me some kind of fancy, schmancy, good-looking model. Like, you know, about eye candy, no thank you. Literally, I'm probably going to get hashtag cancelled at this point for calling somebody eye candy. But anyway, <laughs> like, I care. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, basically, I said, you need to believe when you watch the video that that person would dance the tango. And we're sitting in the, I'll never forget it, we were, we're in the studio, we were down at Sony Studios just off Tottenham Court Road, and in walked this ca the, a guy called Michael Kamen, who's the guy, like big orchestra guy, who did all the music for um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And he's done millions of film scores and everything. And I knew my, we knew Michael because we'd done a thing at the UN with him. And basically, Michael comes in and he's like, hey, guys, I heard you just come in to say hello. Da, da, da. I was just on the phone. I'm a really good friend. And said I was coming to see him, Alan Rickman. He loves you guys. And everybody literally looked at each other and went, Alan Rickman would dance the tango. <laughs> so I said to Michael, I said, would you ask him if he, uh, if he fancy, if he would like to be in Texas video and dance the tango with me? And, um, and he did, and he canceled the first week of his holidays to do the video, to do the lessons. And we became, we just became the, like he was, he hadn't done Harry Potter at this point. And, um, I remember we were sitting in the in the, the Winnebago thing getting ready and he was literally like, have you ever heard of these Harry Potter books? And I was like, you <laughs> sh** me. It's like, what's wrong with you? And he was like, yeah, I'm going to play Snape. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was like one of those ones. And and basically we just, we became we became friends for forever. And um, he was just the most generous human being you'll ever meet because he gave so much to young young artists, whether that was in music, film, direction, photography, he really did a lot behind the scenes, Alan Rickman, that nobody ever knew about. And he was always there to help young, new artists, like, fulfill a dream and, and make something happen. And, you know, that proved it when we asked him if he would be in a video, and he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And, you know, he was just, he was just, you know, just one of the great, great human beings that, that, that I miss dearly, and so many other people do as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, he, he, I've heard him talking about his acting method, which was like, it's all about listening. And it's the same thing that I take on board when I'm doing any interview, mm. just listen, because there's no point in thinking about the next question. No. It's just, it's a conversation. Totally. And just listen to the person and whatever comes out, respond to. Um, and on that note, I have to end it because someone over there is telling me I've got to. Go like yeah, kill it. We've got we're closing the building. All right. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Charlene. This is Ricky. <laughs> you just heard Texas in front of probably the smallest crowd you've had in years, right? 
no, I'm in front of my daughter and my husband every night. Well, I'm like, so let me entertain you. And they're like, shut <laughs> up. Are you go really like that at home? No. Uh, no. I do mess about though. But when I sing along to the radio, they go, oh, for God's sake, shut up. I, uh, yeah. I'm like, people pay money for this. They're like, <laughs> they're like, we don't care. Yeah, there's no point in showing off unless you're getting paid for it, I uh, think. <laughs> right, thank you very much indeed. Have thank a great you so night. much. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Texas.